You can use a sales agreement in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 for long-term commitments with the customer. So each time they buy products, you can use the agreed-upon terms and conditions. And you will have the ability to track to which extent the agreement has been fulfilled with regards to quantity or amount. Let's look at the scenario where CARE, the sales manager, has just negotiated a new agreement with the customer that commits to buy the product, Satellite Speaker Models 1, for at least $5,000 over the next six months, and then in return get a 10% off the normal price during those six months. Furthermore, under the same sales agreement, the customer commits to buy 2,000 car audio systems Model 2 during the eight months for a unit price of $120. Now Kevin enters the sales agreement in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. You can find the sales agreements under the Sales and Marketing Common Sales Orders Sales Agreements. From this list page you can create a new sales agreement. Enter the customer account. We choose a contact person for the sales agreement. We can also specify a customer reference on the sales agreement if we need to add a name of a person that is not registered in AEX, for example. Furthermore, there is an option to enter customer requisition identification. This will be copied to the sales order when the sales agreement is used. If the invoice account on the sales order should be different from the customer account, then we can modify the invoice account and that will also be transferred to the sales order. There is a group of fields in the documents field group that are used to describe general information for the agreement. There is a sales agreement ID which is issued from a sales agreement number series. Document title is a free text area where an informative title will help the person that creates sales orders to identify which agreements to use in the order creation process. We will call this electronics. The prepare will automatically be filled in with the name of the user that creates the agreement when the agreement is saved. If the agreement is documented outside Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012, and has a certain document number, then this number can be included as a free text in the external document reference. You need to select a sales agreement classification. This could be general sales. The classification can be used, for example, when searching agreements. It's a mandatory field and new agreement classification values can be added in a dedicated setup form. Once the agreement is saved, this field cannot be changed. The default committed setting is used when creating commitments as lines on the agreement. We will get to that later. We will adjust the default validity period to an expiration date six months from the effective date. The effective date will default to today's date. This will be the valid period that is by default written on the commitments that will be created for the sales agreement. The status is here on hold and that implies that the agreement cannot be used on any sales orders. The status has to be effective before it can be used on a sales order. The delivery address is a default delivery address that is defined on the customer card. If the delivery address on the sales order should be different than the default, then we can change the address here and that will be transferred to the sales order when using the agreement. In the terms area, you can update the payment terms charges, groups, campaign ID, delivery information, administrative information, and if any specific sales commission should be applied 
to the sales order header. This information will be used on the sales order when it uses the agreement. In our scenario, Kevin and the customer has agreed on a new payment term that is different from the other purchases that the customer might have. So he will change the net 30 days to net 75 days. But then he also has to pay electronically. This will be transferred to the order as well. He also agreed with the customer that the mode of delivery should be UPS next day air. Now the header of the sales agreement is finalized and we need to add the commitments that Kevin and the customer has agreed upon. Go to the line sections of the sales agreement. Expanding the sales agreement header shows selected fields from the header that is relevant for the creation of the commitments. We can create four different types of commitments on the sales agreement. Product quantity commitment, product value commitment, product category value commitment, and value commitment. A product quantity commitment can be a promise to buy a quantity of, for example, thousand of a specific product as home theater over a specific time period for a unit price of, let's say, 2000. A product value commitment can be a promise to buy the specific product, home theater, for the monetary amount of $50,000, for example, over a period of time, and in return get a line discount on the unit price. A product category value commitment can be a promise to buy products within a sales category for the monetary amount of 50000 over a period of time and in return get a line discount on the unit price. Or finally, a value commitment can be a promise to buy for a monetary amount of say 50000 independently of what product or category and in return get a line discount. Well, Kevin negotiated two types of commitments. One was for the product satellite speaker model one for a monetary amount of $5,000. And this is a product value commitment. And the other was for 2000 pieces of car audio system model two. And this is a product quantity commitment. If we select the product value commitment here, and add a new line for a new commitment and we enter the product. The commitment is independent of configuration, size and color, so we leave these fields blank. The field quantity and unit is blocked for this type of commitment. We enter an amount of 5,000. dollars and the discount percent. The expiration date is defaulted from the header and that is correct for the valid period runs for six months. However, we could change that date on the line and have a different valid period for that specific commitment. We can enter more information about the commitment by expanding the line details fast tab. Here we also have the validity period. In order to use this commitment, then the requested ship date on the sales line has to be within the effective date and the expiration date of the commitment. If the amount of $5,000 was a limit of how much the customer could actually buy over a period of time and then get the 10%, then we would set the check mark marks enforced. We also have an option of setting the mode of delivery on the commitment. This will be if it deviates from the, what we specified on the agreement header. This mode of delivery would be copied to the sales line when using the same thing goes for the commission sales group. If there were a limit on the net amount, 
on the individual sales lines that was fulfilling this commitment, then we would enter a minimum release amount and a maximum release amount. So if the net amount on the sales line falls under it or exceeds the limit, then this would generate a warning to the order processor. The price and discount tab contains the 10% that we entered. In some cases, Kevin needs to make sure that all sales order that uses the agreement is using the same discount as stated on the commitment. So the person editing the sales order should not be allowed to modify the price discount information on the sales line and still use the agreement. In case they do so, the sales line will not be registered as fulfilling the commitment. To enforce such a policy, Inga would set the check mark. Price and discount is fixed. On the fulfillment tab, there is an overview of how much has been sold for the commitment. Now we have not used the agreement yet, so the remaining is the full amount, 5,000. Once we create a sales order that uses the agreement and add a sales line on the sales order according to the commitment, then that will be registered as released. When the goods are physically delivered, meaning when the packing slip has been registered, then the amount will move to the delivered field. And finally, when the amount is invoiced, then it will be visible as invoiced. The full committed amount is visible in the amount field. The content of the project tab is enabled when the agreement is defined for a specific project. The project ID, category and activity number will default to the sales line. Now we need to enter the other commitment. The customer has to buy 2,000 pieces of our Cordio system, Model 2, over the next eight months for a unit price of 120. The default commitment is changed to product quantity commitment. That determines the type of commitment that we will add now. I enter the product car audio system model one. We do not enter anything for configuration, size, color, and site warehouse, as this is not a criteria on the sales line in order to use the terms of the commitment on the sales line. The quantity fields are now open for editing as this is relevant for the product quantity commitment. We enter the quantity of 2,000, and the unit stays as default from the product. The sales line has to be in the same unit. Your unit price is set to 120, according to the agreement with the customer. The net amount is automatically calculated based on the quantity and price information on the commitment. And the expiration date is defaulted from the header expiration date. But in this case, it's wrong. As Kevin negotiated a valid period of eight months, we adjust the expiration date so it covers eight months. So now all the information is filled in on the agreement, and we can freeze the current version of the agreement by selecting the confirmation button on the action pane. And we select the agreement is set to effective after this process. So then it will be ready to use. Now the agreement is in status effective. This ends the presentation and I will recommend that you see the video where the sales agreement is used in creating the sales order.